She's back! <laughs> Remember Elliot Engel, the person who uh, we've been talking about quite a bit lately? He's the politician from New York's 16th Congressional District who recently equated AOC endorsing his opponent to dictatorship. He literally said this. And on top of that, showing up to his district for the first time in months, he was caught on hot mic saying he wouldn't care if he didn't have a primary. So this is an individual who has been exposed so much lately that even the mainstream media might not miss a huge political upset. Because back in 2018, nobody in mainstream media was paying attention to AOC and her primary challenge against Joe Crowley. They thought that he was untouchable. But now they're starting to realize that not all incumbents are safe. And even CBS News realizes that this could be an upset. So as a result, because Elliot Engel is in danger here, well, the establishment is uh, bringing out the big guns to try to stop Jamal Bowman from beating him. So first of all, House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn, along with Adam Schiff, have come out to endorse him. And also, Hillary Clinton has decided to throw her weight behind Elliot Engel. Now, this comes after he was already endorsed by Nancy Pelosi and the Congressional Black Caucus. Yes, you heard that right. Congressional Black Caucus endorsing a white conservative over a black primary challenger who is progressive, who actually cares deeply about issues related to racial justice and social justice and economic justice. I mean, you can't make this up. So... I need you to understand this represents everything wrong with the Democratic Party because they're coming out to endorse him after he put his foot in his mouth multiple times. This is an individual who is not a serious person. He literally said that AOC endorsing Jamal Bowman is like dictatorship. He says this isn't a dictatorship. This is a democracy. So are all of these endorsements that you're receiving from establishment politicians is that tantamount to dictatorship as well? Or is it only a dictatorship when your opponent gets endorsed? Katie Porter and Bernie Sanders also endorsed Jamal Bowman because he's a good candidate, right? He's bringing together people from the Elizabeth Warren wing of the Democratic Party, whatever they represent, and Bernie Sanders Democrats who actually want people in Congress who are going to represent working class Americans. And Hillary Clinton, I mean, it's especially egregious, right? Because she's not really in politics anymore. She doesn't necessarily have a role. She has no power. All she has is influence. And she's using it selectively at times to basically keep us from making any progress. You're endorsing Elliot Engel over Jamal Bowman. Like, what are you doing? Are you proud of this, Hillary? I mean, she really has no shame, so I shouldn't be asking that question. Um, but this individual, if, if you weren't already disgusted with Elliot Engel, I think this article from The Intercept really explains everything wrong with him. And it speaks to how horrible Democrats are who choose to endorse this person. Quote, GOP money flowing to Super PAC backing Representative Elliot Engel documents show. And Ryan Grimm and Akila Lacey explain a Republican Super PAC is funding an outside effort to help reelect Democratic Representative Elliot Engel locked in a tight primary against insurgent Jamal Bowman. The Super PAC is called Americans for Tomorrow's Future, following in the proud tradition of nonsensically named political action committees. The connections to the GOP are apparent enough that the Center for Responsive Politics lists it as Republican conservative. The PAC's treasurer, David Satterfield, is a former aide to one-time Republican Senate leader Bill Frist. Satterfield works now at Huckabee Davis Lisker, a prominent firm that does election compliance and accounting work for Republican campaigns. This cycle, the firm is handling the accounts for the National Republican Center Committee, National Republican Congressional Committee, and the campaign of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, among dozens of other GOP operations. The PAC, presumably due to its visible Republican ties, is not spending directly in Angle's New York primary. Instead, it funneled $100,000 to another super PAC called Democratic Majority for Israel on May 27th. DMFI, a controversial operation inside the Democratic coalition, spent heavily against Senator Bernie Sanders in the Democratic presidential primary with help from the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, or 
IPAC, The Intercept reported in February. Since cashing the Americans for Tomorrow's Future check, DMFI has spent more than $600,000 boosting Engel and hitting Bowman on TV and with digital ads, mailers, and paid phone banking. DMFI has not spent money on any other race since taking money from the GOP operation. The congressman, who's been in office for over three decades, is the chair of the House Foreign Relations Committee, where he has served since 1994. From that perch, he has been particularly conservative on policy toward Israel, even as the base of the Democratic Party moves leftward on the U.S.-Israel alliance. Pro-Israel groups have contributed more than $1.3 million to Engel over the course of his career. NORPAC, another pro-Israel PAC, is Engel's second largest contributor this cycle, after the pro-Israel America PAC, and has given his campaigns $132,509 throughout his career, while Bowman's campaign is focused on issues like health care, housing, education, and justice reform form more than foreign policy, he would certainly be more progressive than Engel, whose loss would be a major blow to leading pro-Israel political groups. So long story short, you know, this GOP PAC is trying to, you know, uh, covertly give this money to Elliot Engel, and they're giving this money to him through these pro-Israel groups. Now, it's funny because Hillary Clinton came out to endorse Elliot Engel, and she has spent years screaming about foreign interference in our elections. Donald's uh, very praise, praiseworthy of uh, Vladimir Putin, but Putin is playing a really tough, long game here. So wouldn't these pro-Israel super PACs, pro-Israel lobbyists, uh, be tantamount to foreign interference? Isn't that an issue? Isn't she as equally outraged as Russia interfering in our elections? Because, you know, Russia can do a lot of things to try to undermine our elections, posting memes online, whatever you want to, you know, say about it. But you literally have organizations lobbying on behalf of foreign governments, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the people who scream the loudest about Russia, like Hillary Clinton, are A-OK -okay with that. So I don't want to make this about a Russia gate, but just note the hypocrisy there. Note that people in the Democratic Party are coming out to endorse the individual who's being bankrolled by a conservative organization, who has spent his career being a conservative in Congress, serving on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, not actually representing his constituents. You know, I think we have to really emphasize, and we talked about this last time, this man did not enter his district a single time throughout the course of the pandemic. And it's not even over yet, but the first time he shows up in his district shows his disgusting Weasley face. He's caught on the hot mic saying, uh, I need to speak because uh, I wouldn't care if I didn't have a primary, so let me talk. Now, I'm paraphrasing, he didn't say explicitly, let me talk, but he was trying to make his case as to why he should be able to speak at that event, which was a Black Lives Matter event, which was because, you know, he wants to show his community that he's there, but he's not there. This is the absence of leadership. The 16th Congressional District of New York has not had a leader, right? And now, I think that members of the Democratic Party establishment, they see which way the winds are blowing, and they realize they could be looking at another AOC-type upset. Um, but, you know, it's not a foregone conclusion. We all thought that Jessica Cisneros had a great chance against Henry Kular in Texas. But in this instance, Jamal Bowman could actually beat Elliot Engel. And they know that and they're scared, which is why they're bringing out people like Jim Clyburn, Adam Schiff, and Hillary Clinton to try to stop Jamal Bowman's momentum. But what we have to do in response is have Jamal Bowman's back. Go to bowmanforcongress.com, donate to him. If you live in that district, Please sign up to canvas for him, a phone bank for him. There are things you can do to help make his victory uh, a reality. We can't let people like this continue to win. We can't allow the Democratic Party establishment try to tip the scales in favor of their preferred candidate, who's a corporatist, who doesn't even care about these issues. He admitted he doesn't care about these issues. So the fact that Hillary Clinton and Jim Clyburn and Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi and the Congressional Black Caucus are supporting someone like this and not unequivocally denouncing him because he claimed he didn't care or wouldn't care about Black Lives Matter if he didn't have a primary... I mean, this speaks volumes to the types of people that they are. They're opportunists, and they don't care about issues. They just want to maintain the status quo on prop of the establishment. He's got to go.